counting it down. All right. According to my computer that spies on me, it says we are now live here on the Omnibus Collectors Network. Welcome to Omni Bros Live Sunday. And I got my fucking... Give me a second. I have, <laughs> I have YouTube on, so I was hearing myself. Uh, anyways, let's go and get this started up. Uh, welcome to Omni Bros Live. This is the Sunday show where we talk about news and popular events, and we are your number one source for all entertainment. But this week, there's nothing going on. So we're going to talk about other exciting, wonderful stuff. I'm Gabe. Welcome to the show. Over to the other side of me. Oh, nothing works here, right? Yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there this you go. Weird. Okay. Yeah. I hate this that. guy, I got Comics Guide 101 holding me down. What's up, bro? Hey man, how's it going? It's a, uh, it's been a, it's been a day, man. It's been a, it's been a morning already. Jesus, dude, I had the craziest week. I mean, I've been so busy and overwhelmed. <laughs> and then we do, then we had this huge signing at the store yesterday with Jim Lee and Donnie Cates. Uh, it, it was too much for me. I it feels good to kind of lay lay back. It's not even just work life; just everyday life has just been burdened. Yeah. Just been just a weight on my shoulder. So it's just been one of those kind of weeks. But it's good to kind of. That's why I don't know anything about the news. I've been just living in this weird, <laughs> like, high bubble of not not knowing anything. Uh, Matt Haven Comics, thank you so much, sir, for the two dollars. Oh, you already hooked us up. Whoa, you already hooked like, us up, man. We're, wow. we're only a minute in. I yeah, I I'm still here just talking nonsense. Uh, let's give it up to uh, Mac Haven in the chat, everybody. Always a great guy to see here with his Doctor Faith icon with the big bulge. Uh, and an incredible two dollars. We appreciate that, sir. Thank I'm, you, thank you. I'm glad you noticed the bulge. I never caught that before, but yeah, that is a big. That is a respectable bulge if you're a superhero man. That is the Alex Ross bulge. Every yeah. every character he draws or paints, it, it, he had that 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 bulge going on. Yeah, it's it's you know you know Brandon Routh when they were designing his Superman outfit for uh, that J.J. Abrams movie, mm -hmm. they had problems because his bulge was really big, and they had problems with it on camera. For who was this now? Brandon Routh, uh, when he did the Superman movie. Um, oh, that's fine. You don't want you don't want Superman with a small dick. It's true. No, it's yeah. true. He's the man of steel for a reason. Well, yeah, I just you know it, you, you, it's like here's this godlike creature that everybody looks up to <laughs> and is wonderful, but yet he's like you know you don't want you don't want a little tic tac in his in his underwear. And speaking of giant bulges, we got. Geo in the house, buddy. What's so, up? Uh, Gio. Doing pretty well. Geo, where can we get some great comics, man? Uh, you can get some pretty cool comics if you visit our sponsor website, AintStarTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions and manga. Yes, manga as well. Yes, up to manga. Fifty percent off. Loyalty discounts tack on an extra two percent to that. And if you order fifty dollars or more in your collected editions order, you get free shipping. Fantastic customer service and wonderful packaging that you can only get when you visit InStockTrades.com. Hey, great plug. Great plug. Great plug. Thank you, sir. And you know what? This is going to be our first show on Twitch. Oh, we're is on it? Twitch. I have a streaming on Twitch. I don't know what's going on because when Jess does this, he has the group, but he doesn't have Twitch. Huh. I have, let me look this up. I have <laughs> the Utaku Farm. I have uh -huh. the group. I know. I'm sorry. I have, have Utaku Farm. I have our, our YouTube channel. I have a Weekend Geekdom, and I have Twitch. Huh. So I have no idea how it's different for each one of us that goes in there, even though we're using the exact same account. Honestly, man, if if I had to pick one or the other, I would go with Twitch over the Facebook stuff because Twitch is really it's been blowing up the last few years. But a lot of people are migrating. <laughs> well, if we're on Twitch, I'm gonna have to kind of just show some some cleavage. <laughs> yeah. Tell yeah like I'm oh, a lot, of people, is back. a lot of people are migrating all their content over to Twitch right now. It just makes sense. I don't know anything about Twitch other than just hot chicks playing video games. Mm, that's all you need to know. Yeah. Uh, um, real quick, uh, let me throw this up because this is awesome. Uh, DH McAdams, thanks for the Murder Falcon recommendation, guys. So worth it. That is the fucking book of the year last year, blowing everything out of the water. Yeah. Everything out of water with Murder Falcon. Mm -hmm. Honestly, guys, 
if you're not up on that murder falcon tip you need to get on it i mean don't look at it as it being just like this book about heavy metal but it's literally there's a lot more under the surface of that book than you ever expected mm -hmm. i was hoping for just you know metal music and kaiju monsters but no they had to fucking swerve on me and put some some heart into it <laughs> well, I remember when it was first coming out, people were saying, oh, Murder Falcon, you know, it's it's like a tribute to metal and all. It really takes the piss out of you because it it tells this really heart-wrenching story about a guy who, without getting, a guy who's dealing with stuff, because I don't want to spoil it, a guy right. who's dealing with some personal issues. And you're like, God damn. And he fuses it. And then at the end, if you're a metalhead, they throw in that last little jab where I was just like, oh, my God. God, and I started tearing up. I was like, oh, beautiful, beautiful tribute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good stuff, dude. I mean, yeah, so I'm glad you uh, you paid attention to what we uh, recommended, and I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always good to hear. So where am I on here? I'm all over the place. So do we have anything to talk? We've got the reprints to talk about. We should probably address that. Yeah, um, we do the reprints. Is there anything else really to kind of discuss today? It I was can a, bring up. I can bring up some topics. All right, it was cool, a, man. We're not getting a Dazzler show. Uh, well, uh, here's some TV news related. It's not Marvel, but uh, Rick Remender signed a three-year deal with Sony to do um, Fear Agent on Amazon. Ooh, that could go really well, or that can go really bad. I think we have our first Twitch comment, and it's the guy's face. I'll take that. That's cool. That's how that works, everybody. Nice. Yeah. Well, Fear Agent on Amazon. Fear Agent, I oh, think. Oh, that's you, right. Yeah. 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 I think Fear Agent is uh, second only to his Uncanny X Force run, is my favorite stuff that he's done. Um, and Fear Agent is really good, but I don't know if Amazon, I don't know. We'll see. It says, it says here the Hollywood Reporter said the trade goes on to say that Amazon beat out NBC's Peacock service. And Warner Media's HBO Max and TNT, who were also bidding on the Fear Agent adaptation as well. Wow! God, yeah, holy good shit! Good for you, Rick Remender, you yeah. motherfucker. He's had a bidding war for Fear Agent, God damn. a book that he could not get to sell. Yeah, Listed by David those, Sandberg. Those trades were a bitch to get in the early days of that series. It was hard to get those trades. Well, I remember when the singles were coming out. I mean, you know, he, of course, he was going around doing all these different podcasts and stuff uh, way, way back in the day, doing mm -hmm. whatever he could to promote that 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 comic when it was mm -hmm. coming out and couldn't get it over, like, a certain, like, number barrier. I don't know what the, the number is. It's, it's obligatory. Let's say, you know, let's say 10,000 sales. Could not break that for anything. He did everything he could to, to mass promote mm -hmm. that book. And now, like, look at him, dude. Now he had fucking deadly class coming out that only lasted a season, but from what I heard, was really, really excellent. And now he had the bidding war for Fear Agent. Good for that guy, dude. I'm on it. I'm I'm proud of him. Well, the, the issue with Deadly Class was it was on the Sci Fi Network. Like that was just a bad. I don't know who decided to stick it with Sci Fi or what. That was just a bad choice all around. That had that been. Um, had that been something on Netflix, you would have gotten a two or three more. We would be on probably season three of that show already. Probably. I mean, you know, look at what they're doing with uh, Umbrella Academy and Lock and Key. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, uh, uh, Lock and Key is like two weeks away. I'm super excited for it, and it looks great. Are, are those Fear Agent books? Like, I know they were out of print and super hard to find for a while. I don't know if that's still the case or not. They reprinted that for Image. Image has the rights now. But is it the the library hardcover or no? Just okay. four chunky trades. Cool, cool. Yeah, the Dark Horse uh, editions are way better. Yeah, I uh, um, I remember when that first Dark Horse volume came out. Oh. It sold out like that was the first time I seen something sell out so quick. Was that Fear Agent? It was impossible to find. No, they're beautiful. Rick, the Dark, the Dark Horse beautiful. on Twitter. Uh, my three year old, my three year overall deal with Sony will have me developing the comics for TV. Uh, so yeah, three years. Good for him, dude. Good for him. But this this is also indicative of kind of the industry as a whole, where you've got these um, you got these companies. They are trying to buy up whatever whatever little comic property they can, in the hope that it'll be the next big hit. They they're really just anything with comics. Just we'll snatch it up. Just we'll pay you. Just come on, please, please. We just want content, and we want want to do it with comics. Well, it's uh, easy like that because 
these things have a built-in audience and that's what mm -hmm. they're going for is like we don't need to build an audience like it already comes with you know x amount of automatic views probably mm -hmm. so that's kind of how it works it's the same as these movie companies who keep going back doing these remakes well, yeah. because you know this movie has a following already there's already a universe created there's already content it just, it's it's lazy but it's smart it works no it totally yeah. works um I, I, but but holy shit, guys! I'm super excited. We're two weeks away from Lock and Key, and that first trailer, ah, oh my gosh, it's pretty cool. It looks good. It looks really good. I saw people complaining about the music, and I was like, well, yeah, people bitch and moan. And guess where that came from? Um, people complain about anything. Um, <laughs> don't say it. it. Wait, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna <laughs> say. It. People will complain about anything today. The thing is, what I think the music fits the tone because. There's this sense of wonderment when you first start reading Lock and Key as the kids are discovering the keys and everything is like, wow, this is really cool. And underneath it, there's a much, much, much darker story that's going to play out and it's starting to set up. So it makes sense, the music, because it starts off very light. I mean, yes, you do have the event that takes place that makes the family move into the house in the first place. But for a few pages here and there, it's like, oh, man, this is really cool. Like, we're learning. We've got these keys that will let us fly and let us lift heavy stuff and, like, a whole bunch of other cool shit. And then it's like, oh, fuck, we have a crazy killer that's trying to get us. Wow. Yeah, it gets progressively darker. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Jess is not here today, everybody. Uh, for those of you asking, uh, he came down with uh, some kind of white person condition. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Tennis elbow? Golf, the golf clap? I think he got the golf clap. Is That's it both? Something like that. Yeah. Both, right? The golf clap. Oh, golf clap. That's what we're going to call. Okay. That sounds uh, golf clap. I got two more news items that we can talk yes, about. Uh, Captain Marvel sequel. Uh, they got rid of the directors and writers. So they're moving ahead with a brand new creative team. Dude, man, Marvel's just dropping all their, uh, their uh, directors and writers from movies. Right, Doctor yeah. Strange lost her director, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and their original writer isn't coming back for that yeah. either. Um, yep. They're shaking things up, man. Well, I mean, we'll we'll see. You know, it was Captain Marvel was mostly received really well uh, in like critically, you know, especially uh, by by Luis. Oh, I hated that movie. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's of girl. that is below Thor: The Dark. No, Thor: The Dark World is the worst one, and then Captain Marvel is like right after that for me. Um. <sighs> I, yeah. I think I honestly think when the new creative team though they can make something really cool out of this. I, I want thinking, it to be a space adventure. That's what yeah, I want. That'd be great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't do the He-Man syndrome. Don't do the He-Man syndrome where you've got him on Earth. I don't want to fucking see Captain Marvel on Earth. Earth is boring. I fucking live here. I hate it. Let's go <laughs> space. Space motherfuckers. That's that's what that's what was great about James Gunn's Guardian stuff. You've got the first five minutes of the first one, he's on Earth. They establish it, and then you don't see the fucking thing. He's in space. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, Thor. The first Thor was all on Earth, also. Yeah, you know, that weird fish mm -hmm. out of water kind of, you know, uh, you know, trope. Yep. But I'm thinking these, these, these creative folks that are leaving these movies. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why. It's always creative differences, but I wonder if it's just something like they just can't keep up with the machine of Marvel to do what they want to do. Like these movies already have street dates. Like it's this movie's happening on this date, and it takes place after this movie, which takes place after this movie, and it all has to tie in together. Maybe that's just you know they just can't keep up with that. Maybe that's not what these writers and directors want to do, and still feel like they're putting out a decent product. So mm -hmm. who knows? But mm -hmm. that's kind of what I think about these kind of things. It comes down to creative difference. I just think, especially in the movies, already like okay, there's this lineup, and we have to. You know, soup to nut that has to be out on this date. So, yeah, that's that's. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. That's kind of the downside of this whole. We've got these movies mapped out for this specific date on this thing four or five years from now. Mm -hmm. We don't have a cast. We don't really have a script yet, but we've got the date because we want to beat out our competition and we want to make sure we lock in that date. So that's the downside of this. It's and then you've got creative that are probably rushing through to meet that date and you know then they've got to submit it through the disney figurehead and then kevin feige has to give his go ahead and i i honestly 
you know, I, I don't have anything against Marvel in general, but I honestly don't think that I would be able to work as a creative under th that kind of constraint. Probably not, but I give me the money, I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, I'll make it happen. I'd make it happen. Yeah, there there are people that they can do it. I don't, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I think I would lose my mind on something like that. All I really care about, the only Marvel news I, I want to hear, and it's probably won't be for for a while, is Guardians Three. Yeah, Speaking James Gunn. That's all I care yeah. about. I, man, I I it, just because of the whole idea of them firing James Gunn over you know the nonsense that he said on Twitter. 15 years ago or whatever it was and then they him getting landing a job at dc to do suicide squad and then marvel going okay can you come back and do our movie for us now <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 forget this happened or whatever the case was but you know that's basically you know that's the uh the bullet points of how that worked out yeah no i mean i think we if you go back i think we even said there's no fucking way he's not coming back like yeah. they'll have to bring him back at some point if you look at those mm -hmm. older videos i think we, we're all in agreement like yeah what's probably gonna end up happening is that they'll be like yeah well we talked it over blah, 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 and he'll show back up and mm -hmm. he'll fix because he's you know guardians is his baby he <laughs> nobody fucking knew who the guardians was and nobody knew except for like the biggest comic nerds and even even general comic nerds you'd ask him what who Groot was or Rocket Raccoon and they'd be like who the fuck is Rocket Raccoon? Yeah. Well that book yeah. was getting canceled like every other month at yeah. one point. Like it was it was it was a it was a bomb on the shelf. It was great. Like those War of Realms uh, 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 the King of Realms stuff or War of King stuff, sorry. That stuff's all really fun for the most part and the Nova mm -hmm. stuff is all really fun, but it, it just wasn't surviving on the shelf. But yeah, I just care about Guardians. I just want more Marvel Cosmic. I know we're gonna get to Galactus. I know we're gonna get to the Eternals. I know we're gonna get to Celestials and Silver Surfer. And I'm just waiting for those cosmic movies to kind of start making that next leap into space. Cause I think that has to be the next big threat. Oh, 100 percent What when do you okay? So when do you expect them to bring in Galactus? Because the Eternals is this year. Eternals would sound pretty logical. Um I would like to see it just because I want it to happen as soon as possible, but that also seems to make the most sense. Do uh, you think we'll get a reference at least to Galactus or something? Yeah, I, 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 yeah it, it would have to be like a super small cameo, maybe like an after scene teaser or or maybe like a reference, you know, to like, yeah. you know, maybe like worlds being, you know, eaten or disappearing or, mm -hmm. or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. It might just kind of come down to just something small. That yeah. only like comic nerds would get. Kind of like when they, the first time they mentioned Doctor Strange. Yeah. They mentioned Stephen Strange, and was it Civil War? Uh, uh, Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah. When he, the guy just spits out, you know, Doctor, you know, we're we're following all the strange people out there, like like you know Stephen Strange, and you're like, oh, I know who that is because I'm yeah. a comic nerd and I don't have a life. <laughs> okay, I okay. Think it might be one of those kind of references. I, I got a game. Picture this. Okay. All right. Eternals, your post credit scene, you see Earth, and the camera slowly pans out, and then you just see a silver board just fly right across the screen real quick. I would like to just see a planet just kind of just, just deteriorate <laughs> into itself, you know? Or you just, or they're just, this is what I would do because I'm not a movie director and I'm an asshole and I like just funny reference stuff. I would just like do like a, a pan of space and a planet would just have a big bite mark taken out of it. That's what I would do. <laughs> they would give me full reign of Marvel movies. Yeah, I would just have a planet with a big bite mark. It would probably be like Uranus or something with a big bite mark out of it. Of course it would be. Um, th <laughs> that's a good question, Mr. Awesome. Will the MCU have the chutzpah, I think that's how you pronounce it, to have Galactus as a 200-foot tall or whatever giant man floating in space? 1,000%. You think they'll do it? Wow. You think they'll yeah. do it? Yeah, I, I think so, too. I don't think they're they're not afraid of Galactus like yeah. uh, Fox like Fox was. They even said like we don't know what to do with Galactus. Like we don't you know we don't think people would get it or it would make sense to people. They they come out and said that. That's why he was a fart cloud in space. Oh god! If Marvel Marvel went thousand percent. Well, a it's their character and they want to keep that character and that IP and that license to sell figures and toys yeah. and T-shirts and everything else like that to be like as close to like you know, character sheet, I guess, as they, as they can make it. And they're not afraid. It's their character. You know, if they can make a, a talking tree work mm -hmm. and a talking planet, they, they can do Galactus. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, I believe that. I, mean, won't, I don't know about the standing guy. I mean, I mean it'd be cool, but we'll you see won't what al- you won't always be seeing the whole picture of Galactus. You know, you mm-hmm. might see him from the chest up or something like that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they had the Celestials and Guardians. Yeah, true. They're they were you know giant huge creatures that mm-hmm. you know destroyed a planet. So I, I can see it happening. I rewatched Guardians 2 the other night, and that is a movie that has grown on me the more I've watched it. I was kind of lukewarm on it the first time I saw it, but I've really enjoyed it a lot more. And and subsequently, Guardians 1 that I originally really loved, it hasn't – for me, I've actually kind of depreciated on it. I'm not dep- I'm, my love for it has gone down as much. Oh, I get it. I, I, I like the story on the second movie a lot more than the first mm-hmm. one. But I do recognize that the first one is a better shot film than the second one. So right, I think the pacing in the first one is better. Yeah, but the second one has an overall better story for as far as characters and what James Gunn, especially fucking Yondu, what he does with Yondu in that film is really good. Mm-hmm. I just think that the first movie is funny, and that's all I care about. I still have a great experience going into that movie and just laughing my ass off, not expecting it to be that funny of a movie in the soundtrack and the music. Mm-hmm. And it's the first time they dropped the word Thanos, and I was like, holy shit. They said, and you saw Thanos, Thanos in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw like a quick little like hologram of him or something. He was on his lazy boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Matthew, no, Silver Surfer has not shown up in the MCU as far as we know. Like, you would you would know because you'd see Gabe's erection in the sky. Oh yeah, you, you feel something poke you in the back of the head? That's me. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Two people that got shot in the back of the head in movie theaters. It's Abraham Lincoln <laughs> and the guy sitting in front of Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> oh my god. Do you have anything else, Gio? <laughs> I was gonna mention that um uh, Marvel canceled the Hulu shows, uh, Howard the Duck, and Tiger and Dazzler shows. I mean, the, who the hell wanted a Dazzler show? I'm sorry, what was it? Howard the Duck, Dazzler, and was there a third one you said? Tigra. Tigra? Yeah. What? Who uh, that? that was a Tig- thing for a moment? Tigra and Dazzler, I think they would have been one show, the two of them together. Maybe. Oh, they would be scissoring? <laughs> Maybe. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Howard the Duck, I kind of get because he's had a resurgence lately um, with like the it, comics that have come out and you know him popping up in Guardians. I kind of get that, and you you can do a lot of stuff with Howard the Duck, um, but Dazzler and Tiger. The, the original plan was to have Howard the Duck, Tiger and Dazzler, Modok, which is still on board, and mm-hmm. Hit Monkey. And all four shows were going to yeah. link up on Hulu to form The Offenders, sort of a spin, uh, parody of The Avengers. Oh, God. That was the original plan, but only MODOK uh, is still on, on schedule. Yeah. Have you seen the cast of MODOK? That is stacked. Yeah, a lot of people, yeah. Yeah, Patton Oswalt is playing uh, MODOK. I, that's mm-hmm. real? Wow. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm pumped. That's good. That's cool stuff, then. Yeah, it's a it's a Modoc animated series. But the thing is, the thing is with Modoc is that um, Harley Quinn has she's set the standard so far for like the animated stuff, comic wise. Oh my god! Yeah. Over the last year, at least, I mean, I haven't seen it, but from what you've told me, Gio, it's mm. going to be a tough act to follow to follow that. Yep, I agree. I haven't seen any of that Harley stuff. You and Jess seem to absolutely love it. Everybody seems to love it. Who've seen it? It's great. It's so funny, man. I still need to watch. <laughs> I still need to finish Watchmen. I'm still on the like episode two. Oh, oh, dude. I know. I know. I got to download it and reconfigure my hard drive so it works on my PlayStation. How the uh, how the Jim Lee signing go last night? Crazy, man. It was great. It was successful and everything. But man, I'm it's it's a it's a big day. I was worn out even before it. Yeah, even yeah. before. You had Lee and Cates in there. You had Jim Lee and Donnie Cates. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. And then like we had a rapper show up, this guy named Echo. Yeah. He showed up. So I mean it's funny because these we do these signings and we get like other creators that live in town sometimes to show up. Like we had Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder once, and then uh James Robinson showed up to the signing. Um <laughs> so you never know who's gonna pop up during any signings, but it, it's just crazy. I mean, you can look on Torpedo's Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I have a video there of John and Jim Lee playing uh, 
playing video games in the back room, playing fighting games. I think it's Marvel superheroes. Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's a good time. Um, I got some stuff signed and, and cool stuff like that. I might show it tomorrow. Dang. But it's fun. It's it's nuts. It's a lot of work. And then I had to do a live show in the middle of it too. So. Oh boy. Yeah. It's all, all right. right. So right. we're ready to talk reprints. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's all do right. it. All right, everybody. So uh, big announcement: Marvel is reprinting uh, Colossal Conan. Woo no. no, I'm lying. They're not doing Colossal Conan. <laughs> Absolutely lying. Uh, verse, I have to list here. Give me a second. So yeah, so big shout out to Omar, our fellow Omni bro. Mm -hmm. uh, his channel, Near Mint Condition, that you guys can find the link down below in our description, uh, has given us and everybody in the community first access to the announcement of yet again, more omnibus reprints from Marvel. All right, uh, let's go ahead. You want to kind of just start from the top and just talk about each one or? Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, we have coming out is the New Warriors omnibus. That's being reprinted, everybody. Nice. Uh, that was definitely had to have been a, uh, uh, a plea bargain with Omar. I think he probably <laughs> cared about that. <laughs> like, he absolutely had to have just been begging for that to happen. Yeah. Uh, speaking of omnibuses that people were begging to have happen, uh, Uncanny X-Men Volume 2, that's the Claremont John Byrne stuff, as well as Uncanny X-Men Volume 3. There you go, nerds. Nice. Finally. A lot of people have been asking for that. Yeah. Yep. So hopefully we get a volume four so coming our way. Since you have the inside scoop, go ahead and sell yours if you've got it. Dude, I, I'd sell mine, but it's signed by Chris Claremont. Oh, damn. No, yeah, you can't get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's signed by Claremont, so that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, oh, God damn, I just dropped the list. All right. Uh, oh, and then one of my favorites, a long time out of print on the bus that we thought we were going to get earlier, but we got a, a box set instead, is that Infinity Gauntlet omnibus. Mm -hmm. So from the announcements from earlier, uh, Omar announced that there was going to be a uh, Infinity Crusade omnibus. So now we have a Infinity Gauntlet coming out. Infinity War is on shelves right now. Mm -hmm. And if any crusade, so you got a uh, triple threat right there. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the big ones. Here's the one where I think everybody's going to lose their absolute minds over. Uh, it's going to be X Men by Claremont and Jim Lee, volume yes. one. Woohoo! There's a lot of people that wanted that. And volume two. Damn, both of them. So both of those are going out. Those are blue, I, man. I, <laughs> I would, I would sell mine, but they are signed by everybody. I probably got like six autographs in there. I'm telling you right now, come that day, IST is going to get slammed with orders for that book, for those books. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, so if I was you, I would Tuesday at 3 o'clock on the release date of that, I would be ready, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, to put your orders in on that. Because mm -hmm. it would go quick, I'm sure. Because people have been asking for those books for years. For years. It's surprised it's taken so long, but you know, it is what it is. And that's kind of, I'm assuming, a big help from Omar being connected with uh, with, uh, with Marvel a little bit. He's, he's able to let them know, like, these are the books people need and people want and they're clamoring for. So, uh, according to Nick Schmidt in the chat, Omar announced the volume four. I didn't catch that, but awesome. Yeah, he did. He announced it yeah. uh, last okay. week. I was too busy making up fake omnibuses. <laughs> That's what I did. And like, here's the announced omnibus. I'm not going to put it in the chat, but everybody just watch it. And I go, okay, well, here's the one. I just made up a bunch of <laughs> and plus, I've been busy. So good. I'm excited for that. We needed a volume four. I'll get it. I'll get that. That's going to be one of the few omnibuses I'll end up picking up. Uh, yeah, eBay hustle, dude. eBay hustle, Clark Nato. Yep. It's a, uh, it's, it's, People are going to lose their mind and they're going to lose money because now they can't sell their books for them. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then the last big, big announcement is Conan the Barbarian, the Kirk Busick Omnibus, Volume One. 
There you go. Whatever that's, that is. That's the uh, Dark Horse stuff. It's getting. It's going to be an omnibus at Marvel. Oh, okay. Yes, I do think that. Oh, it's not on this chat. It's on somewhere else. Someone asked if we thought Marvel printed new warriors just to make Omar shut up. <laughs> yes. Omar just <laughs> from the previous uh, what was it twenty that Omar announced Thunderbolts that was to make me shut up. I wanted to, I've, I've been beating the drum for a Thunderbolts on the bus for the longest time. Yeah, that was a given though. I mean, people have been asking for again another one of those books that people have been asking for a long time. And the the thing is that that I love about Marvel is it shows they are listening. They are listening to this small group of. Collectors within collectors, they they they're they they listen and and they know that we want these reprints or we want these books. It probably helps that Omar also has you know talks to people, um, but they're listening. Unlike you know, we're not going to get into a bashing rant or anything like that for the other company, but unlike them, who it just doesn't seem like they know what they're doing right now. Yeah, it's a uh, it's 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 sad to see. Whenever these books get announced, you know 99% of the time the Marvel ones are going to come out. Mm -hmm. And the DC ones, unfortunately, you know, it's very hit and miss and very edge of your seat, waiting to see what's going to actually come down the pipeline or not. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to post the uh, in the chat. These are the omnibuses that we announced that came out today or that Omar announced. Wow. And then, I'm gonna see if I can somehow make that a banner. I'm gonna play around with the stream guard for a second. Apparently, I can. Con can you guys? Can we all control comments? Because I can. I can click stuff now. That's new. Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. Look at that! Oh, this is gonna be fun. Cool. I, now we get a fight usually, over Google. Yeah, it's usually the host. Now I can mess around and 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 tease Omni Dog when he's. <laughs> doing his thing, I can show all the different comments and stuff. There you go. There's some of them right there. I can only fit so much there into the banner. Oh, but I can make another banner. Motherfucker. Ooh. I'm going to hack the Matrix. I know how this can, is going to Can work. they all fit in the ticker? Uh, I'm on, I, I think there's a 120 character limit, which is what oh. I'm running into. Yeah, that's but that's basically everything, right? Your new Warriors on this, on Kenny X-Men Volume 2, Volume 3, Infinity oh, Gauntlet. It's Chris Claremont stuff. Yeah, it's... Oh, and the Jim Lee... Um, it's a lot of X... Yeah. X is going to get The Jim Lee 90 stuff. Man, the Jim Lee 90 stuff, that's such so much fun. So, such fun comics, dude. Dude, and he still got it, bro. I don't know if you guys saw the little sketches he was doing yesterday. Oh, that God. guy, man. And those are just like... Not even like this is real work that's going to get published. This is, you know, I'm doing a sketch for somebody. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you ever get a chance, uh, go listen to his interview on Fat Man on Batman. This was years ago before Kevin Smith, like, hit it behind a paywall or something like that. Um, the older episodes. He talks about the how, I think it was like he took a year off from, he just lived at home with his parents for a year. And what he would do is he would wake up and draw. He would spend the entire day drawing, getting better at his craft for like a year until he felt he was good enough and he'd start submitting work. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I, I've heard that before. I've heard him say that a few times, that he treated it like he had the job already. Mm -hmm. Hey, and that's what you got to do sometimes, man. You got to take the hit and, you know, you got to make the sacrifice sometimes. And obviously it paid off for the guy because he's, he's recognized as one of the greatest. Uh, I'm going to say 2022. Ooh, yeah. volume five coming out. Yeah, that's it. Volume four gets announced. Now, like, now what are you going to give me next? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done for me lately? <laughs> I mean, you never know. They might they might rush it out quick. They've been getting those Conan books out quick. Yeah. You know, and nobody's really been asking for Conan for a while. I didn't know we had such a large fan base for Conan. To be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, I like the character, but like, wow, five, what, ten omnibuses already? Between the Marvel years and the Savage Omni? 
Yeah. Bruce, like jo Bruce Johannes, I don't know if they're going to reprint those Brubaker omnibuses because a, a lot of those were on clearance and they didn't move when they were on clearance for a while. I should just sell mine. It's a great run. It's, it's probably the best Captain America run that's ever happened. I remember when that was coming out, man. When the Winter Soldier stuff was happening, it's like you're bringing back Bucky. What the fuck is wrong with you? You don't bring back Bucky. Yeah, you don't bring back Bucky. You don't bring back Uncle Ben. Oh wait. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then they bring back Bucky, and it's like, wow, he pulled it off, and it's fucking awesome. Yeah, and made the character better. Yeah. I love that run. I I love the run. I loved it, especially when Bucky took over the shield, and he was Captain America for a while. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. And then, you know, Marvel, and they had to bring back Cap like a few issues later. I'm like, oh, you guys suck. Yeah, it kind of, like, once Cap came back or became that whole, like, who will wield the shield, that's kind mm -hmm. of, it kind of fell off a little bit for me, too. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, everything leading up to, like, those first, what is it? Is there five Omnis from that Brubaker run? Is it five or is it four? I don't remember. There's quite a few. It was a few. It's five. I have three. I have the, the 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 first three, which I think are like the better portion of it, and a little bit of the fourth one too. Yeah, everything for me. Everything leading up to when Cap comes back is gold. After that, I'm just like, uh, okay. There we go. All right. So I just updated the video description with the the reprinted Omnis. So man, we're on it. That's some solid news coming out of today. Mm -hmm. It's been a slow week. It's been a long week. Anyway, um, anything else, Gio, as far as news? Uh, let me check real quick. I agree with Clark Nino. This is always an issue. Uh, nobody wants four and five if you can't get the first three. That's sure. the main. That's the thing that uh, this is exactly what Dan the deal was talking about with them taking the numbers off of trade paperbacks and their collected editions. Because if you, if, you, if you see a volume four, you go, oh, I need to get one, two, and three. Oh, there's no one, two, and three available. Now I'm not going to get volume four. And then sales just die. So yeah. mm. that's, that's, that's a problem. So that's, that's why. That's the, yeah. new, the new hardcovers and trades, the volumes on the back, I think, volume one or two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the same with... Uh, like the epic collections, they have the volumes on the back and they print them mm. out of order. So, mm. you, you know, you don't need to read all of it. What does that translate to? This has got to be nonsense. No, it's a super chat. But what does it translate to? It's probably like five bucks, right? American? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that denomination is, but it's five hundred of it. I, I got you. Let me let me look it up. Whatever it is, whatever it is, man. You know what? We appreciate it. Thank you, and we will pass the message along to Jess. That that is a lot of money. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Did you uh, look it up? Did you, yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I, I looked up the conversion. I'm not going to say the amount because everybody let's, can do that. Yeah, let's, let's not say the amount. But uh, check Karuna is the currency. I think I said that right. Post it, like the, post it in the private chat, Gio. So anyways, uh, yeah. awesome. Thank Take you, Dan, Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll, like we said, we'll, we'll pass the word over to Jess or even Riley or any of the other like 60 admins there are that could check out your request <laughs> and make sure that you're still good to go. Yeah. Uh... No. Okay, well... we'll We'll, we'll move. We'll move forward. Move forward. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, if wow, I am speechless. If that's true, thank you. So let's keep rolling. What? Thank you. Um, yeah. Let's keep. Rolling. What else? Some Q and A's. Some Q and A's, or we got more to kind of chit chat about. I there's a news story that I wanted to talk about, but I can't find the uh, article. But let's do Q and A. See if I can find the the news. A lot of X Men questions in the chat today, man. I, and we, I think we're the least qualified 
X Men wise, yeah, uh, don't look at me. None of us are really huge X Men guys. You would need Omar and Riley for that. They they have the encyclopedic knowledge of X Men. Now, if you ask me something about Hellboy, I'd be able to help you out. You can talk to me about Aquaman. I'll be happy oh. to talk about that. But you know, I mean, I know enough about X Men, but to like map out what an omnibus is going to contain, that's no, nah, no, nah, because I don't, I don't know how Marvel will you know put other things in there like possibly like one shots or, or or annuals and stuff like that so with x-men massacre doesn't that continue the issues of uncanny x-men where you need a volume five maybe we'll 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 have to wait for that to actually happen i got the i i got it and i i am so dumb for forgetting about this uh bad robot is taking over just as like dark that's what i wanted to talk about god damn it god yep. damn it God damn it. I, oh, God. <laughs> uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, J.J. Uh, Abrams' company, Bat Robot, is taking over the Justice League Dark film and TV franchise development. So yeah. if it's a TV show or a movie, we don't know yet, but what, whatever happens, they're the ones that are going to be putting that out in theaters hey, or mm -hmm. TV screens. Remember when we were supposed to have a Guillermo del Toro Justice League dark film? It was going to be badass, and del Toro had like a whole Bible written out for the entire dark universe and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, whatever happened? No, no, we're getting J.J. Abrams now. Yep. Fuck. According, according to Deadline, Bad Robot is reportedly booking meetings right now with writers for specific projects under this umbrella. Characters possibly under that umbrella based on the comic book series include John Constantine, Madame Zanadu, Swamp Thing, Dead Man, Shade the Changing Man, Zatanna, Phantom Stranger, and Detective Chip. If they're going to do Hellblazer, it has to be like HBO. Like, don't half-ass this. HBO, mm -hmm. something, go go that route. If you're going to do Hellblazer right, the, the Constantine show was, from what all I've heard, was good, the CW one. But for the love of Christ, they really couldn't even really have the guy smoke on there. Yeah, it was on NBC at primetime. You can't really do much. Yeah, so it, yeah. It, wrong market. Yeah, and and John is an asshole. He mm. is a fucking asshole. He is not a nice guy. Bring back the same actor. The actor is loved. I forgot his name, but the actor uh, is really well loved. And make it Matt, an HBO show. Matt Ryan, I think. Yeah, yeah. People no, love no. Him. Mm, fuck all that. Bring back Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Bring back Keanu Reeves. That movie was awesome. I like that movie. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Del Toro left the project in 2015, and since then, Doug Le Lehman was supposed to join the movie, but he left as well. And in 2017, they released the animated movie instead, and yeah, we're still on hold for the live action, just as like dark. <sighs> you would think. It's such an easy property to adapt. Yeah. It's got magic, it's got superheroes, it's it's the re it's a perfect recipe for Warner Brothers. You had Guillermo del Toro. The yeah. guy loves this type of stuff, and he's great at it. Mm -hmm. wah, wah. And then you drop the fuck. Oh my god, that's so frustrating. And the, the thing is, del Toro couldn't wait anymore. He, he was down for the project. It, it was the same thing with the Hobbit. He was getting backed up with projects, and he could not wait and keep and you know his schedule just didn't allow it. Mm -hmm. and, and then he goes on and makes. Shape of Water. Uh, he made something else before that. He makes Shape of Water and he wins an Oscar for it. Yep. Oh, the fish fucking movie? Yeah, that, was a, yeah, that was a beautiful fish fucking movie, goddammit. I still think that is set in like a, somebody's dream in the Hellboy universe. Because it's straight up Ape Sapien. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it definitely. It, there, yeah, there's, it looks too much ape, like Ape Sapien not to be Ape Sapien. Oh, yeah. But yeah. that's some weird fucked up dream someone's having. I could totally <laughs> see that have been that that project was originally like an Ape Sapien movie, and Del Toro had it sitting on his uh, sitting in his laptop or something. He's like, "Well, fuck it, I've got it. Let me just change some things around." Yeah, let's make it sexier. Yeah, yeah. let's get let's get Ape Sapien laid. <laughs> uh, did we know that they were doing a DMZ adaptation for HBO Max? I think we brought that up. I'm surprised they're doing it, considering Brian Wood and everything that people have said against him. Yeah, because Rosario Dawson has been cast as uh, the lead role in HBO in. Max's DMZ pilot. Done. I'm in. Yep. I'm in for the pilot. Done. I'm there. I don't care. 
Rosario Dawson. That's all it took for me to be interested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brian and Wood or not? Ava DuVernay is producing the MC as part of her overall deal with Warner Media, which also includes the New Gods movie. Ooh. Interesting. Omar Talking. in the chat. What Talking. up, Omar? Hey, Omar. Where's the old man at? You know where he's at. We talked about it on, in our chat. He said that his golf clap is acting up. Yeah, he's making us work while he enjoys a little vacation. <laughs> Isn't that just like, you know, never mind. Yeah, this, this dude, Dave's not a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, also, we had the trailer for Clone Wars, the final season. Are you a fan of that? I've only watched the first, when it first came out, I watched the first two seasons, loved it, didn't keep up with it. And then when it came out on Netflix, I watched the first two seasons again, and then I dropped it again. Now that it's on Disney Plus, I might as well just finally go ahead and watch the whole thing because I've been meaning to uh, finish the series since forever. But it looks awesome. That trailer looked badass. Oh, the Clone Wars stuff? Yeah. What was it? Ashoka? Ashoka? Is that Ashoka. how you pronounce it? Yeah, she's really in the last few years coming to popularity with the Star Wars fans. Mm-hmm. Good for her. I think I, I think I saw that like Rosario Dawson or somebody was pitching to play the live action version for it. Like they wanted to be yeah, the actor. Yeah, they wanted to do a movie or something. Yeah, there's potential there. I'd watch it. Yeah, is she still? Is can canonically is she still alive? I have no idea. She appeared in Rebels, but I haven't seen that yet. So, mm-hmm. okay. It was already Dawson's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Can, we talk, can we talk about the death of Mr. Planner's peanut? Yes, let's address it. I think oh, it's my. a topic that needs to be discussed. Oh, my God. It, it, the death of an icon. After 100 years, Mr. Yeah. Planner's has died. Mr. Peanut. He gave his life for, for Wesley. For Wesley Snipes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Wesley Snipes, yeah. It's God damn, man. I, it broke my heart to wake up that morning to see that news. I mean, if you're gonna give it up, at least give it up to uh the blade. So wait, he's they're killing him off? The same way they they, they killed Jack from Jack in the Box? No, 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 no. They they flat out kill Mr. Planner's peanut in the new commercial for the Super Bowl. Like they they're driving the peanut mobile and they fly off the side of the pe- the it's Wesley Snipes and Mr. Planners and they f- and some other uh, no name actor and they fly off the side of the road and then all three of them are holding on to like a little branch they're like no 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 don't die we don't want to die and Mr. Planners gives up his life as he's slowly falling down and he lands on a car and you think well maybe he could still live boom the car blows up <laughs> uh, that's like what they did with Jack I don't know if you guys remember when they killed Jack from Jack in the Box. Like it was the same thing. Like they blew him up, and then like twenty years later, they brought him back. This is my favorite comment. I'll never tell. <laughs> You'll just have to keep watching to find out if I'm being sarcastic or not. How about Mr. Peanut is now peanut butter? I love peanut Ooh, butter. Yeah, crunchy or smooth? Smooth, crunchy is for animals. That you yeah. that's for monsters. Thank you. Free, oh, come on. Chunky's the best. No, Chunky's terrible. There's nothing like, oh man, I can't wait to have this nice, smooth. Oh, why is there rock in the fucking peanut butter? <laughs> God damn it. It's, it's, it's between my teeth and my gums. It hurts. It's terrible. I hate biting into peanut butter and it's crunchy. Especially when you don't know, like when you were a kid and you go to like a friend's house and they <sighs> back in the day when you used to go to your, your friend's house and hang out and play and their parents would actually make you lunch. And you get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and you're like, God yeah. damn it, man. I just chipped a tooth on this peanut. Oh, I'd smack the mom in the face with the sandwich. Oh, man, i give it to the dog. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but no, right now, I love peanut butter. It's one of my favorite things to eat, like a snack, but it has to be. I get the all natural peanut butter from Sam's Club. Yeah. Uh, because it literally has like two ingredients in it it's like peanuts and like palm oil, like some kind of like oil. And that's mm-hmm. it. But you go get some other all natural peanut butter, there's like 15 ingredients. No, no. Get the ones that have just real peanuts in it, and that's it. Mm. Almond butter is good too, man. If you ever get a chance to try that, it's a good substitute. What is? Almond butter. That sounds good. That's good too. Yeah. It's good. It's a good substitute. <clears throat> I 
All right. Well, uh, anything else going on in the world today, Gio, that we should be aware of? Uh, there's Picard stuff, but I don't follow Star Trek, so I don't know. Yeah, that episode premiered. That, that didn't Entertainment Weekly give it a bad review, but nobody really cares what they say after the Witcher situation. Oh, I I don't like that company at all. They're, they're yeah. terrible at reviewing stuff. They yeah. they don't they don't like any comic book movie. They're very critical of every TV show and the Witcher stuff. If nobody knows what we're talking about, they watched the first episode, didn't like it. Then they skipped to episode five or something like that, and then the they watched the, the season finale. Yeah, the to review. make a quick review. Yeah, the the reviewer he watched the first episode, didn't like it. And what was it? He skipped four episodes. Yeah, like he watched episode five or six and then skipped all the way to the end to make a quick review for, you know, uh, to get the uh, ad money for the website. I don't know. Yeah. To get the clicks. Yeah. So wait a second. Wait, let me see if I'm following this right because this sounds like I'm, I'm hearing things. So a reviewer watched Witcher episode one was like, eh, I don't like it that much, but I got to get this check. Mm-hmm. Or then goes episode five, mm-hmm. and then skips to how many episodes are there in season one? Eight? eight. I think it's eight. Yeah, eight. And then does a review off of three random, literally random episodes of the show. Yep. And he admits I mean, to this, like he he goes, "This is how." Oh, no, 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 no. I, I mean, I think he mentioned they mentioned it somewhere, but uh, they didn't make a fuss over it. The fans, the community, picked it up. And and blew it out of proportion. Like, oh, you're re- you're only watching three episodes, and you're reviewing uh, an eight, eight episode series. Like, what? Well, I mean, that's like people who complain about trailers or review a movie based on the trailer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the whole thing. I mean, it's like watching Mandalorian and then only watching that that bounty hunter episode that was kind of could have mm. been left out. And then terrible. make a review on the whole season. You that can't, you know, you can't review an entirety of something if you didn't watch the entirety of something. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's kind of indicative now uh, for the internet as a whole. It's I just got to get content out to get clicks, and I just got to get it out qu- as quick as possible. Damn research, just I got to get it out. And man, I I don't know. I tried doing that for a little bit with my old channel, and I was just like, fuck this shit. Because by the time I would upload something. <laughs> You would have four or five other videos that would beat me to the punch from like the most popular YouTubers, and I was like, "There's no fucking point in this." You're not gonna win. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna win. There's, there's, then, no fucking there's no point to it because you're not really enjoying it. You're just watching, consuming as fast as possible just to get yeah. clicks for money. And what's the point? I, I'd rather watch it later and do like a deep dive or something like that than to rush uh, a review. Yeah, there's there's really no fucking point in doing it. So you know, and, and that's the whole. That's the whole rigmarole of like YouTube in general, where you have to constantly pump out stuff. And that is, just, no, I'm, I am too old and I've been doing this too long where I just like, I'm done. I am done. I'm done with producing content that way for, for right now. I just don't want yeah. to do it. Well, it just manipulates everything too. If you're trying to be the first one out there with that content, then, you know, it, and, and it's not good enough or you're not really basing yes. it on anything, you know, it, it really changes the, the dynamic and the reason for this. Kind of, I mean, I mean, you know, let, let's let's be honest, and it's not point fingers. We've we've tried that before with like Marvel release movies, where we try to talk about it the night it comes out or the morning after it comes out, mm-hmm. and it's really not worth it, you know, because you just you know you watched it once, and then we, we we try to dive into it, and it's not really worth the time and the effort, you know. I'd rather you know watch it like three or four times and then have a discussion on it. Well, also mm-hmm. the, the reality is that they're okay. There are four or five big comic YouTubers, and they pretty much have the entire market cornered. And you know who they are. They pretty much have the entire market cornered as far as like this medium as it is. And everybody else is just kind of digging at the bottom for scraps, and it kind of sucks. It's this is a niche within a niche, and there are guys that just beat us, beat everybody else to the punch, and they were fortunate to do it. Oh yeah. So it's you know there, there's just no I don't know there's to me there's just no point in trying to keep up with those guys anymore. Well, especially if that's what you're trying to do is to just try and top them or keep up with them, like keep up with the Joneses. You're just gonna hurt yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, when, at least when we do it, we do it for you know we're not trying to like get subs. Like the only subs we care about are from like Jersey Mike's or something. You know, fuck you and your sub. <laughs> um, but we do it for fun. We do it to try and, you know, the people that we have, our, our, our loyal listeners and our loyal, you know, viewers here, you know, we try to pump it out for them, but we also, we're trying to be honest with it. We're trying to be legitimate. And we're not trying to be the next, you know, 
top five YouTube channels. We're not going to make it to there. We, you know, we're not trying to. We could if we dedicated our entire existence and lives to this and our jobs. But you know, we're not. We're not about that. Yeah. Plus, if, you know, the it's not. I I agree. It's not worth it. There are better things to worry about. <laughs> you know what we are all about, though. What? You guys want to do a Q&A or you guys want to kind of cut this? We got about five minutes for the hour. Yeah, yeah, we can do like five or ten minutes. All right, motherfuckers in the chat, all of our awesome folks there in chat. Uh, if you got <laughs> questions or whatnot, let us know. Uh, throw, some, throw some love in the chat. And don't forget to, speaking of not caring about your subs, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if this is your first time here. Gabe, where are you at in my hero? Uh, the animated show, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, t -t 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 um, I am, so Midoriya is hanging out with La Million. Okay. And they're with, is it Night, Night Eye? Night? Mm -hmm. uh, Nine, yeah. Yeah. All, All Might's like former sidekick or whatever. Oh, you're catching up. You're you're catching up quick. Yeah. And they got, they got some, some nefarious things kind of going on a little bit, you know? All right, so did you see you saw the one for all versus all for one fight, right? Oh dude, that thing made me cry almost. How good was that, man? Dude, that was fucking that was <laughs> rough and awesome. <laughs> it, the this season has a better one. This season has a better oh, fight. Gosh. I don't know if I could deal with that stuff. Oh, it has, it does. It, they just aired it like two weeks ago. I know, I remember you jumped into the chat and was like, Oh my god, my hero academia, something happened big. Don't watch it yet. It's yeah, only in Japanese. You gotta, you know, spoilers. <laughs> So, I think we lost uh, our boy. He'll be back around. I, my bet is uh, battery. And what I like, and not that I like, but what's 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 great is you're still here, and you haven't had a single issue yet. I know it's weird. It's good. I'm surprised myself. All right, I'm gonna dump Luis real quick, so dump you can kind of log back in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I can answer this. Um, Amazon Original Blade of the Immortal only good. It's pretty freaking badass. I haven't kept up with it. I've watched like the first six episodes, and it, it's fantastic. I do recommend it. If you got Amazon Prime, check it out. That's what we should do. I like this. What Larry said here: season four, of Buffy judged on bad beer only. So we should just. You know, I know Geo, you don't like to, you don't drink or whatnot, but we should all just review stuff, but only three episodes, but do a fucking drunk. Yeah. This fool. Was it battery? So, yeah, my battery on my laptop died, so I'm on my phone. Figured. <laughs> but yeah, this season, uh, this season's been the, the best so far animated, but you know, this, um, yeah, uh, the new chapter just came out today for My Hero, and it's oh, war. That's all I gotta say. All out war has broken out. Nice. Can't wait for that. Oh, it's so good, man. Yeah, because right now there's a lot of stuff going on with the villain side of things, too. They're yeah. really starting to set stuff up. Yeah, the payoff, the payoff is right now for a lot of that. <clears throat> but I'm, to, I'm at the part where oh, I don't want to get into, it. I don't want to do spoilers, but you know, the thing that takes away quirks. Is going on? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah that's, that's good. Anybody uh, read the uh, Warren Ellis James Bond? I didn't. I haven't. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, I, as much as I love Warren Ellis, I don't think that's enough to get me to get into like James Bond. I've never been a huge fan of James Bond in general, so I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Nope. I think Riley mentioned that he liked it once or twice. I think he mentioned that. That dude reads everything. Jesus. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how he keeps up with everything. He can even read a phone book. I don't know how he keeps up with everything that comes out. Good for him, man. I remember those days when I used to be able to do that stuff. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't have the. I don't have the time anymore. What the heck? Uh, Gio, do you know anything about this? Deathstroke on CW Seed? Is that a sh is that a show? It's an animated series, but I think it's like short episodes, like um, two or three minutes or something like that. And they're supposed to make like a thirty minute uh, season. 
It, he, he is voiced by, um, oh boy, who was the actor that played the thing on the Fantastic Four movies? Michael, Michael Chiklis. Chiklis. Yeah, he's doing the voice for uh, Deathstroke. Oh, that's kind of cool. I love Michael Chiklis. Well, I love The Shield, I should say. Gio, uh, before we get out of here, Gio, why don't you tell them where they can get some comics? You can get comics by visiting. Wait, where's the freaking banner? There we go. When you visit our sponsor website, instocktrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off, loyalty discounts tack on an extra 2% to that. We also have Omni Bros quarterly discounts. So be on the lookout for that eventually. And if you order $50 or more in your collected editions order, you get free shipping. Fantastic customer service excellent packaging that you can only get when you visit instocktrades.com. Mm -hmm. Good job. Uh, oh, uh, oh, there we go. Hour long episode. Yeah. Yeah. We kept it tight today. I, I actually got to get going because I haven't eaten anything and I'm about to break my 16 hour fast. Oh my God. I'm dying. Oh man. Um, I'm hurting. Yeah, I'm doing uh, I'm doing intermittent fasting, and it's actually been pretty good for me. I've uh, dropped well, I po I posted the picture yesterday. In two weeks that I've been doing it, I dropped about eight pounds. Nice. Yeah, so it's a uh, eight and sixteen is what I'm doing. Oh, you uh, you fast for sixteen and eight and eat for eight. Yeah, I usually um, I usually have lunch around uh, well breakfast. I usually break fast around twelve one o'clock in that ballpark, and I stop eating around seven eight. And after that, I don't eat anything else for the rest of the night. When's your workout fit into this? Uh, after work. After so, I get out of work. So you are you oh, so you're already in the middle of your eating like regimen at that point. Pretty much, yeah. So okay. I get out of, I get out of work at four thirty. I usually get home around five thirty. I'm in the gym by about six, and I usually hit it for about an hour. So that gives me enough time to cook everything. That gives me an hour to cook everything and eat real quick, and then. From eight o'clock, eight thirty onwards, I don't have anything for the rest of the night. You don't just go straight from work, huh? You don't just go straight from work. Well, I work out at my complex. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My complex has a gym. Very cool. Uh, real quick, I'll do this real fast for Triple C's collectibles. He's asked this a few times. Uh, wondering if Six Gun Deluxe Editions uh, Four and Five and Six are out of stock. Uh, looks like uh, I just had it up. Let me pull it back up again. Uh, volume four is is good, so you're good there. Uh, he said five is five is out of stock with no expected restock. It looks like, Ooh. and six is back stock with the possibility of it being re, uh, restocked. But oddly enough, the Gunslinger edition is still available. Hmm. For those editions, go figure. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to get out of here, guys. All right. Where I'm out of here, too, guys. All right. So, everybody, uh, where can we find you online before we bounce out? Uh, you can find me on my channel, A Week in Geekdom, talking about anime, comics, and manga in general. A Week in Geekdom. Uh, you can find me at. Uh, Comics at 101 on Twitter and Facebook, and there's a bunch of old videos uh, on the YouTube channel, Comics Guide 101. So there's that. All right. And uh, don't find me, I'll find you. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Have you been getting requests a lot this week for friends? Yep. I've gotten like two from people that I don't even know. I've gotten a lot from people I don't know, and from a few people I actually do know, like family members mm -hmm. around me. But yeah, it's a lot of people where it's like, oh, you have five mutual friends. I go, who are these five mutual friends? Oh, people from the group, whatever. Denied. Yeah. I don't, I don't add, dude. I don't add people to my personal Facebook for for obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, follow, follow those guys at um, on uh, Instagram. Yeah, you can hit me up on Instagram. Gabe loves '90s comics, uh, Torpedo Comics as well, and uh, Omni Bros Live, all on Instagram. All right. <laughs> So with that said, we are the Omni Bros. Thanks for everybody for showing up today. Thanks for In Stock Trade for being our wonderful sponsor. Make sure you check, mm -hmm. check us out tomorrow, and we'll go over this week's releases, our hauls, and our reads. Uh, hopefully, just as golf clap clears up by then. Also, thanks to John for the super chat. Thank you so much. Yep, that was Appreciate awesome. It.
And Mick well, Haven had a great super chat as well. And uh, we are the fuck out of here. Bye.